Okay, hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to configure a router on a stick. You might have heard this term before, or you might have heard some different ones like a one-armed router, or maybe a stub router, and I'm sure there are other ones as well. Basically anything that refers to a router that has a single connection into a switch and is performing trunking functionality, we're talking about the same thing, a router on a stick. And this all relates back to inter-VLAN routing. So if you haven't yet checked out the tutorial on inter-VLAN routing, take a look for some of the theory behind this subject. But essentially what we said there was, if you have two VLANs and the devices in each one want to talk to each other, you need a layer three device, like a router, in order to achieve that. And so that's what we're going to do here. We have a router and we have a single switch. We're going to go ahead and configure both of these. On the switch side, we're going to have three VLANs, one, two, and three, and we're going to go ahead and set up a trunk port, and since we only have one connection, we're going to make that our trunk into the router. So we've covered all this before. We'll go over it pretty quickly on the switching side. Now on the router side, things are going to be a little bit different than what we've, than what we've encountered so far. Let's start with the router's Ethernet interface. Now, in order for the router to perform like a trunk, we're going to have to go ahead and imagine this is the router interface, just logically speaking. We're going to have to go ahead and divide that interface into what we call sub-interfaces. And each sub-interface is going to correspond to a different VLAN on the switch. Our configurations are going to look something like this. Here you see FA01, that's Fast Ethernet 01, and right after it you're seeing the dot .2. That means this is a sub-interface. We're taking Fast Ethernet 01 and we're going to chop it up. Anything after the decimal point is the name of the new sub-interface. Okay, now that number, 2, that's only significant locally to the router. You can put anything you want there. However, since each sub-interface usually corresponds to a single VLAN, it's a very common practice in order to put the VLAN number there. So if we look at the next line, then this will come together. We have to state our encapsulation, just like on a normal trunk, either .1Q or ISL. Right after that, we have the number 2, which specifies which VLAN is going to correspond to this sub-interface. So now you can see why I put .2 on the uh, interface name itself because when you're looking at it it's very easy to figure out which VLANs belong there. Okay and so why are we doing this? Well basically you understand that a trunk um, has traffic on it. All the frames are going to be tagged and that helps the receiving side either a switch or a router determine where that traffic goes. Well the router is going to be receiving tagged traffic from the switch because this is a trunk so it needs to be able to figure out what to do with that traffic. Likewise, when it sends frames back to switch A, they need to be tagged properly as well so that switch A will know what to do with those frames when it receives it. Okay, and so since this is a router, this is where our routing takes place, we're going to go ahead and put an IP address on each of the sub-interfaces, and it's optional. You can put a description on them as well. I find it pretty useful. Okay, so this is our approach. Now let's go ahead and jump into the lab and actually show you the live configurations. Okay, here we are on switch A, and let's start off by taking a look at our VLANs. You can see we have more than VLANs 1, 2, and 3. However, we're only going to enable those VLANs 1, 2, and 3 to ride over the trunk to the router. That way, we're only going to create three sub-interfaces on the router, and we're doing this just to save time. If you, after you do one or two, you'll get the idea pretty quickly. Okay? So I'm going to quickly set up a trunk. If any of this doesn't make sense, take a look at the VLAN trunking configuration tutorial where we go into very good detail um, everything you need to know about setting up trunks. We're going to use interface FA020 for our trunk. You can see it has a dynamic desirable config on there. First, we need to go ahead and set up our encapsulation. And we'll use dot one q And then we'll hard set this to be a trunk. 
And you know what? Since we don't need the negotiation, let's just go ahead and put on the no negotiate configuration as well. Now let's limit our VLANs. Switchboard trunk, allowed VLAN, and we'll put one through three. And we'll make sure this port is up. Now let's see what the configuration looks like. You can see we have the encapsulation defined. It's uh, hard coded to be a trunk, no negotiation, and only VLANs 1, 2, and 3 are allowed on it. That looks good. Let's jump out and take a look at the interface itself. It's down right now. We'll go ahead and connect that interface. And so let's go ahead now and jump on the router, determine why the interface is down, and then we'll configure the sub interfaces. We're at the command line on router A, and so let's begin by looking at FA00, which is the port connected to the switch. And we can see here that it's administratively down. So that explains why the link was down on the other side, because on the router, it's been shut down. Let's take a look at the configuration on FA00 as well to see what we're working with. It is in fact shut down, there's no IP address assigned, and the duplex and the speed have been hard set. Okay, so now we're ready to get started. We'll jump into configuration mode, and the first thing we want to do is go ahead and make sure that 00, zero is enabled. We'll issue the no shutdown command. We need that interface up, because if it's not, all the sub-interfaces will be down as well. Also, if there were an IP address configured on FA00, zero zero, we would want to remove it. All of the IP addressing information lives now at each sub-interface. Okay, well we're ready, so we'll jump into and create our first sub-interface. That'll be dot one for VLAN one. We specify the encapsulation, and if I show you the parameter, you'll see there's only dot one Q allowed. I might have mentioned in other tutorials that a lot of platforms at Cisco are moving away from ISL. Still, we have to state it here just so that we can go ahead and tell it what VLAN to tag. And then I'll go ahead and add an IP address. And so let's go ahead and take a look now at the interface. So you can see we've defined the interface itself. We've defined the encapsulation and an IP address. Let's do one more thing. We'll add an interface description. And that's it. That's the whole process. Let's quickly do the other two. We'll go into uh, FA00.2 and the encapsulation will now be two IP address here you can see that configuration and then finally we'll create FA 00.3 and let's take a look at that interface as well. Okay, so there you have it. We've created those three interfaces and we'll go ahead and take a look. You can see now they're all listed, fast ethernet 00, 00, .1, 00 0.2, and 00 0.3. This looks good and that was pretty simple, right? Let's do one more thing. We'll jump back on the switch and make sure that it is functioning properly as a trunk. Okay, back on switch A, let's go ahead and take a look at FA020. We can see it is now up, which is great. And we'll take a look at the switch port itself. And there we have it. It is functioning properly as a trunk and we have completed our mission. So that's it. It's not very difficult. Um, take some time just to review the simple commands on creating the sub interfaces and that's really all there is to it. Once you have the trunking part established on the switch, there's not all that much more to do on the router. 
Okay, so that's it. That is how to configure a router on a stick. Thanks for watching.